Hello and welcome to another installment of the CR Wrestling Commentary. I'm your host, Cedric Kennedy, and I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Butch Reed. And, I mean, he's, you know, he's dead. Um, in January, he suffered two heart attacks. And on Twitter, he wanted everyone to pray for him, send him lots of prayers and whatnot. And I kept myself quiet on that because, in my mind, if prayers work, then wouldn't things be happening a lot different than what they are today? Uh, that's so I was like, you know what? I'll just be quiet on that and, you know, let people wish all that they wish. And, uh, that's about it, you know, for that, you know, let, let them do what positive they think they can do and, you know, prepare for the inevitable. Um, I have not yet listened to the shoot interview done by the Hannibal TV. I haven't listened to that one hour uh, shoot interview with Butch Reed. And that was a while ago. And I saw it when they first did it. I just didn't, didn't care to listen. Considering the fact that I was too busy enthralled with so many other things. So getting into my thoughts on Butch Reed, I didn't see, I didn't really get into wrestling um, like straight up memory, like until 1989. That's the earliest that I can remember having a sustained thought process about professional wrestling. So when I first saw Butch Reed, he was under the mask. He was Doom. He was with Doom, um, did not have the name. It was just, even Jim Ross was like, so what do you call it? Doom 1, Doom 2, and, and nobody really knew. But um, under the tutelage, I can't remember... I know it was woman, um, and I think they're just calling her Nancy at the time. I can't remember, but she was the manager, and it was also during a time where Rick Steiner was supposed to be in love with her and trying to date her or some weird mess or something like that, some kind of, I just didn't buy into it. Not even then. I was like, what's this got to do with wrestling? <laughs> you know, I, I was a little kid. I was just, I was a little, little punk kid, not even into my teens. I was getting there though. Um, you know, I was and just still like, what's this gotta do with wrestling? Um, so I got to see him only through that light. I've only known him as a heel. I never knew Butch Reed was a baby face at any other point. Had no idea. Um, and that 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 does annoy me and whatnot. It does. Um, you know, I just uh, I wish I was born 40 years from now. And sometimes I wish I was born 40 years before I was born. <laughs> just so I could know this stuff. Uh, time paradoxes and all. I saw Butch Reed uh, perform as uh, Under the Mask once. And... You could tell it was different between him and Ron Simmons, but it was just once, and the match was, it was a tag match, and it was against, um, I think it was Anderson, I think it was Arn Anderson, and I don't think it was Tully, it was somebody else. It was somebody else. It was during the Dangerous Alliance time. I can't remember who it was. Um, but... It was like a three-minute match. That's all it was. It was a three-minute match. Nothing really got into it and stuff. So live, I've only seen them a little bit. But, you know, at least, you know, when it comes to Butch Reed. But then seeing him in tag team action after they've unmasked. And, you know, even while masked, but then even unmasked, it was like they got better. And I got to see them go against, you know, Road Warriors, Steiners. You know, I got to see them go against a lot of other tag teams, Rock and Roll Express and Who I uh I liked Butch Reed. I liked Ron Simmons. I liked hearing they would be in the ring growling at their opponent. They were quick, they were burst of energy. I would I would watch Butch Reed and he would have this presence about him. he always had this and you could always tell him away or easily apart under the mask from Ron Simmons looking back on it because of how he carried himself when he would c 
cut his little small promos. In ring trash talking, in other words. It's just his movements. He always moved like he was ready to run away. <laughs> you know, I'm about to do something. So he would reel back. He always like he was getting ready to run away or run to the camera. It was weird. That's how I remember it. All the tapes I got, I got a lot of wrestling tapes from from back then. If I watch it, I might be like, okay, my memory is messed up. But from right now, that's all I can think. That's all I can see. And I thought, like, man, why don't why don't he, you know, and Simmons not just do sing, uh, tag team, but do singles? They could dominate. They, could, I thought they, Butch Reed and Ron should have been world champions. You know, uh, at least, you know, like I thought at the time, okay, that Butch would be uh, U.S. and then Ron would be TV. And then they would like move up. Like whoever takes the U.S. from Butch, Ron would beat them and then just toss the TV title aside and be like, I never liked that anyway. Just be a complete jackwad heel. It just seemed like Butch Reed was a far better talker and he could say so much more and back it up in the ring. It was always easy to believe that they did not like their opponents. It was easy to believe Butch Reed when he says stuff. It was like, oh yeah, he means that. <laughs> it was easy. And then he just vanishes. He's just gone. He just vanished. He's just gone one day. Just gone. And it was like, what, a month? Two months later or so? He shows up. Superstars of Wrestling. WWF. Yellow tights. Yellow hair. Didn't even recognize him. I, I didn't even know. I just like, oh, they bought another black dude trying to replace Coco Beware because Coco Beware sucks. He's not getting anything. He's not doing anything. And I realized it's just how WWF produce and pro, uh, uh, showcase the majority of their talent back then and partially today. You know, it won't erase thing. It was just how they were. It was, you have no background. You have no nothing. You just come up here and do all, be different, be someone else. And so he still, when he started, when he got to the ring, he would do his intro with Slick and he'd get to the ring, get up on that apron and he would start jaw jacking the crowd. I was like, that's, that's Butch Reed. Then he get in the ring and it's like, yeah, the natural Butch Reed. And I was like, oh, okay, it's Butch Reed. <laughs> you know, and I'm still trying to, I'm still at that age of, who these people? Still, you know, so recognizing them, it always took a little bit, you know, because I was still in the in the you know learning stages you know trying to recognize faces voices and things i picked it up quick with with wrestling um and when he would wrestle in wwf i never saw anything memorable nothing he he would get i don't i don't remember his moves i just remember him being there talking punching axe handles uh knee lifts he butch reed loved the knee lift Ron Simmons, I think Ron Simmons adopted it from him. Everyone can do a knee lift, but it's about the style of doing that knee lift. Um, I just didn't see anything of him. You know, and that sucks. That really sucks because, you know, I was learning about Roddy Piper, Dusty Rhodes, you know, about 92, Ric Flair, but... Butch Reed just came and went. Coco Beware was phased out. Others was phased out. And, and it was like kind of where is anyone or everyone? And then all of a sudden there's nobody. You know, I thought Butch Reed would show back up in the NWA slash WCW. Never did. Didn't see him anymore. Didn't hear from him at all. You know, and I'm not a... I just... I under hear me out i understand when it comes to professional wrestling like anything else it is its own world okay i don't like using universe too much but it's its own world so that means there are people out there and yet i would in the past call it stalkery no just a fan just they're just 
well, saying a fan is kind of saying stalker because it's short for fanatic, which means you're kind of stalkery about it. But I don't know what else to say. I don't know what other terminology to use other than being a fan. Um, sure, they're going to say a follower. You know, I subscribed to Butch Reed back then. No. So the whole thing is they... I was they, they they would find things about him. They would look things up. Where is he now? Who is he married to? I mean, you think Wikipedia is one thing. These people could still probably fill in Wikipedia with a lot of stuff because they would just find him. And Butch Reed, I've been listening to Jim Cornette, and I'm going to listen to uh, Hannibal at some point. But I got to figure out why why were people so direly afraid of him even even some of the most rugged tough people like Dennis Condry who wouldn't really back down to anybody back down to Butch Reed you know the Steiners wouldn't even mess with him I mean just I never heard of him hurting anyone or beating the hell out of anybody but certainly people was like no nah, I'm not even gonna try that so I am curious I am curious what what did he do in his past? Because Harley Race, he's got a thing. Ron Simmons, he's got a thing. Ming slash Haku got a thing. You know? Every, lots of people got things. And you can be like, yeah, I wouldn't mess with that guy. I've never heard anything from about Butch Reed. And you look at him and you can tell, you don't mess with that guy. But at the same time, I never heard of anything. I wish I could have seen, you know, him wrestle constantly as a baby face you know or even as a heel and get to see what he does in the ring learn his move set all of that amazing stuff but that's not going to happen you know 66 he didn't even really live a full life at 66 that's young everyone that's young okay that's really young and if you're someone in your 20s or 30s saying, no, nah, that's old. No, that's, that's, that's young. And before you call somebody old, as they are, you will be. So you might want to think about your little insults before you uh, commit to them. <laughs> and the way things are now with COVID, as they are, you kind of hope to get to be there. <laughs> But I'm, you know, hey, Butch Reed is somebody I really wish I could have seen a lot more of, and maybe learn some stuff because man, I missed out, you know, my youthful stupidity about heels and how they work and what they do. I just didn't know, didn't learn, didn't understand, didn't care. Being, you know, twelve, well, eleven, twelve, thirteen, ugh, yeah. I was I was stuck on it, glued eyes, but I wasn't stuck on it with a open brain, not open enough. That wouldn't happen until I was sixteen. <laughs> I think that's when I think that's how old I was. But yeah, Butch Reed, he's gonna be missed and yet always loved. And with that, everyone, it's been CR Wrestling commentary. Thank you for your time, patience, and energy. Thank you for listening. <laughs>